Hello everybody and welcome back to another Fridays with the Ranger video. I'm Ranger Bailey and today I'm filming at a table here. I have a couple of little bison or buffalo sitting next to me. And today we're going to be talking about the importance of the American bison, not only to the Lewis and Clark expedition, but also to indigenous tribes across North America. So let's get started. So let's start off by talking about the difference between a bison and a buffalo. Do you know what the difference is? Well, uh, even though it's really hard to tell, there really isn't a difference. Um, the original name for the American bison or buffalo was called a cibola by early Spanish explorers, but they really only called it that because that was also the name of the area that which they were exploring. But the name of the bison or the buffalo would later be tossed around by different groups, and they would call it the Bison de Amerique or both, but later it would be called buffalo. But this wouldn't actually be applied until the early 1600s as buffalo, and then later in the 1700s it would be called bison, even though Lewis and Clark had always called it the American buffalo. Today, the animal is formally known as the American bison, and many indigenous groups would utilize the animal for many of their resources, using everything that they had not to, to make sure that nothing went to waste of the animal. And similarly, the Corps of Discovery would also use the bison for a lot of things like the food, shelter, clothing, and other materials that they needed. But it wouldn't be later until um, later in the expedition on June 28th of 1804 where they would see their first bison in the prairies of present-day Kansas City, Missouri. But it wouldn't be until later of August of the same year that they would get their first kill. The men of the Corps would often make note of the vast number of bison that they would see along the Great Plains of the Midwest. Meriwether Lewis even wrote about this in his journal on September 17th of 1804. This scenery, already rich, pleasing, and beautiful, was still farther heightened by immense herds of buffalo, deer, elk, and antelopes, which we saw in every direction feeding on the hills and plains. I do not think I exaggerate when I estimate the number of buffalo, which could be comprehended at one view to amount to um, 3,000. So they came across a lot of opportunities to utilize the animal wholly. And the American bison can weigh up to 2,000 pounds, so there was a lot of good use for it. And I actually have a couple of products and pieces here with me today to show you about how di indigenous tribes were able to use, utilize the animal itself. So let me go grab those for you. So let's first start off by one of the most crucial pieces to the American bison that we still use today and indigenous groups would use um, earlier in history. So this is what's known as the bison hide. Um, on one side I have here is a br dark brown fluffy material which is the fur of the animal and on the other side is the leather portion. Um, so this doesn't have any fur on it and it's light beige in color um, and they wouldn't really use like small pieces like this. They would often take the whole hide of the animal and use it for like blankets and uh, cutting it into uh, material for clothing and other uses so not for a small piece like this. So, so as I said before, uh, many groups would often use both sides of the bison hide for um, like clothing and keeping people warm, but they could also take this fur and scrape it off of the hide itself just so they can separate different uses for it. Um, so oftentimes they would use the fur to make uh, stuffing for pillows, they could make this into headdresses, and also um, rope. And I actually have that with me today, let me grab that for you. Um, so this is what rope would look like if it was made out of bison fur. Um, it's a bit more wiry in material compared to the softer touch of the bison hide or bison fur. Um, but they were able to utilize the fur for many other things. And on this tag here it says bison hair. And on the other side it has a couple of different uses for it. So as I said, it can make rope, uh, headdresses, and pillow stuffing with it. So they were able to make a lot of uses out of um, just about everything from the animal. So going back to the bison hide, there are two different types of hide that I would like to talk about today. So the first one being the regular hide of the animal, which I've already talked about a little bit. Um, with this, they would just kind of skin the animal and leave it as is. So um, as I said previously, they can use it for clothing and other types of shelter, like they would be able to use it for like leggings and pouches and even moccasins. So um, just because this is kind of a, a softer part of the animal and it was more fleshy, so it kept many warm. 
Um, now the other piece or the other type of hide that I would like to talk about is called rawhide and that's a little different compared to this hide that I have here today. Um, so the rawhide is they would take the um, skin of the animal, they would take the hide um, as is, as I have it today, um, and they would soak it so everything would be saturated and soft in material. And then they would scrape, they would take it off, take it out of the water after a couple of days and scrape off all of the fur and fleshy material from the skin, leaving it um, to dry out. So as it dries, it becomes more durable and hard, kind of like a plasticky material. Um, and with that, they were able to use more durable tools. So they were able to, they were able to make like containers um, for like food, clothing, and even like medicine bags. And what's even great about this is that they were able to use it for ceremonial purposes as well, such as like um, different different drums, rattles, and other important ceremonial tools as well. So it's it was very great for many uses. The next item I have to show you today doesn't really match the name of the actual item. Um, so let me show you. Um, so for those who are listening, um, I have a, a large plastic bag sitting on my desk here and the inside um, it looks like a large piece of dried up dirt. <laughs> But it's not. What it actually is, is bison poop. And when I tell you that tribes were able to make use out of all the animal, they really did. Um, so bison poop or bison chips were often used as fuel for many groups. Um, so believe it or not, this played an important role. Um, they would use uh, the fuel or they would burn these um, in order to make smoke, so for smoke signals as a form of communication, um, long distance I mean. Um, whether that means somebody's in danger or they're just trying to get gather people into um, a common area, they would use um, bison chips as a form of fuel. So the next piece I have with me today is already kind of in the form that it was used for. Um, so I'll show it here to you. Um, so this is a bison horn. Um, it is white in color at the base of it, um, but the color kind of tapers into a black in an almost an ombre effect um, towards the top. Um, it has a leather strap attached to it so you would be able to hoist it to your back when you're not using it. Um, and at the top here it has a little stopper, so it's hollow on the inside. Um, can you think of what they might have used this for? I'll give you a second. So, um, they would use this as a powder horn, so what they would do is they would hollow, or it would come hollow, um, and then they would put gunpowder in it. So they would put gunpowder in these to keep their, the powder dry, because when gunpowder gets wet, you can't use it anymore. So these were very helpful for those who had guns, but also what these were used for um, when they weren't used as um, gunpowder horns. Um, they could be used for other smaller utensils like spoons, ladles, and even cups as well. So the next piece I have with me today is very small but it is a definitely uh, interesting <laughs> I might say so let me pull it out. So this is a bison bladder. Um, it looks kind of like a deflated balloon um, and it's also yellow in color and it's very crinkly. So in this form of the bison bladder they would take the bladder, uh, clean it out obviously, um, and dry it out so it, it would come into or become this type of material. And what they would use this for was to hold liquids, so like water. Um, so they basically used uh, bison bladders as water bottles, so this became very useful at times when they would run out of um, different containers. So the next two pieces I have to show you today um, are kind of smaller pieces as well, um, but they played a very important role to different groups and for their many uses. So the first one I have to show you today is a bison bone. Um, now I'm not exactly sure what specific part of the skeleton that this is or that this came from, um, but in, as a regular bone they would use these to make um, war clubs 
or shovels and even awls, which is a pointed tool that they would use for leather working. So I, I'm assuming they would break pieces off and they would become very pointed at, at the end. And so they would be able to pierce different holes for their leather working. Now the other piece I have is a bison bone. So this is a very long piece of um, bone for the skeleton. Um, so they would use this to make arrowheads and scrapers. So as I talked about before, um, with the hide, they would use this once the once the hide is um, submerged in water for a couple days. So the fur is soaked and everything. They would take the scraper and scrape off that excess uh, flesh and other materials to make rawhide. So um, these two types of bones were very helpful for different groups. So this last piece I have to show you today um, is quite possibly my favorite piece or piece of a bison to show you. Um, I saved it for the best for last just for you guys. Um, so I might as well just show it. <laughs> um, so this guy is a bison stomach. Um, for those listening, um, it is very large in size. Um, I actually have to hold it with both of my hands. Um, in color, it is a light brown, kind of a beigey color, and it also similarly looks like the bison bladder because it's like a deflated balloon as well, but it's dried out, so it's very sturdy. Um, so the bison stomach had four, has four chambers, um, the first one being the largest and what um, tribes would often use it for, mainly. Um, so they would take out the contents of the inside of the bison stomach, kind of like the bile, and they oftentimes would use it for um, medicine. Um, they thought it would be able to treat uh, different types of skin diseases and also frostbite too. So they thought this was very helpful um, for medicinal purposes. But what's also great about this is that it's sturdy enough and strong enough to hold different types of soup. So like. Um, different containers for liquids as well, just like the bladder too. Um, so just because this was sturdy enough, they were able to feed a lot of people and just keep the contents inside um, warm and sturdy enough. In conclusion, these are just a few of the examples as to why the American bison was so important and is still important today to indigenous groups across North America. Um, it's even been recorded that there were over 150 uses for the animal. So because of that, the American bison was seen with utmost respect and as a symbol of life and abundance for indigenous groups. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video about the important uses of the American bison to um, indigenous tribes and as well as um, the Lewis and Clark expedition. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Um, stay tuned next time for another Fridays with the Ranger video. Bye everyone and stay safe.